Welcome viewers, you are watching my YouTube channel Biohub and I am your facilitator Dr. Seema Sharma. Dear viewers, we are on chapter number 9, Reproduction in Animals. I am covering this chapter part wise and in this video I have covered its third part which is dealing with fertilization, its types and certain other specific terms related to reproduction. Before proceeding with the content of this video, let me show you the basic layout of this chapter. This chapter is basically divisible into three parts. First part is about reproduction, its meaning, importance and subtypes. Second segment that is 9.2 is devoted to understanding about sexual reproduction and its various steps. Third segment is segment number 9.3. And in this segment, you will get to know about asexual reproduction in animals. Video related to modes of reproduction and reproductive systems in humans is already there on my YouTube channel, Biohub. So in order to know about this chapter in a systematic manner, I suggest you to go through those two videos before watching this. So in this video, I am going to cover the content given in NCRT science textbook on page number 102 and 103. So now hurriedly, let me take you to the objectives of this video. In this video, you are going to learn about fertilization, its meaning. Together, we will explore about types of fertilization. In the same video, you will also come to know the meaning of viviparous. And we are also going to decode the meaning of this term oviparous. Last part of this video is about one very important term and that is metamorphosis. So without further delay, let's get started. Viewers, stay tuned and watch this video till the last. Are you ready? Okay. Fertilization. The first step in the process of reproduction is the fusion of sperm and egg. Sperm and egg are the male and female reproductive cells and the process of fusion of sperm and ovum is called fertilization. Both these pictures are depicting the sequence of fertilization. Sperm which are in million number they are coming closer to the egg they are surrounding it and one of the sperm it is fusing with the egg during fertilization nuclei of sperm and ovum they fuse to form one nucleus within the egg and now this egg is called fertilized egg and scientifically it is called zygote so during sexual reproduction the sperm and ovum their nuclei fuses together to form single nucleus within that egg and that egg is now called as fertilized egg or zygote. It is also single cell and this picture is depicting the process of zygote formation. Zygote is the first cell of the new individual or new organism. It changes over a period of time to form the complete organism. And this is the pictorial representation of the same process, fertilization and zygote formation. So this was about fertilization. Now let's move on to our second objective which is about types of fertilization. There are basically two methods by which fertilization takes place in living organisms. First one is external fertilization. And the second one is internal fertilization. So let's know about external fertilization. If you will go into the literal meaning of term, you can decode very easily that external means outside. In external fertilization, fusion of male and female sex cells is taking place outside the animal's body. So isn't it amazing children? Yes, indeed. External fertilization is seen in majority of those animals which generally live near the water bodies like ponds, lakes, 
streams. In order to know about this mode of fertilization, the ideal example is frog. During spring and rainy season, frogs, toads, they move to ponds and slow moving streams. The male and the female, they clasp each other in water. Female lays hundreds of eggs. The eggs are very delicate and they do not have shell. Flimsy layer of jelly-like substance holds these eggs together and provides protection to them. The male ejects sperms directly on the cluster of floating eggs. The sperm swims in water with the help of their long tail because sperm is motile and it fuses with the egg and fertilization takes place. So fertilization here is taking place outside the animal's body. Thereafter, formation of zygote and development of tadpole and is also outside the animal's body. Frog is just one example which was taken to explain the meaning of external fertilization. But there is a long list of other aquatic animals like starfish, jellyfish. They also gather in large groups in slow moving water and there they lay eggs and sperms together on the surface of the water and fertilization takes place externally outside animal's body. Viewers, here I want to apprise you that all those animals which are undergoing external fertilization, they lay hundreds and thousands of eggs. And the reason behind laying hundreds and thousands of eggs is that many of them will be washed away with the water currents. A few of them might be eaten up by other animals which are living in that water body. A few may not be able to fuse with it. But every organism, every animal wants to ensure that its species continues generation after generation. To ensure continuation of species generation after generation, all those animals which are undergoing external fertilization, they are laying hundreds and thousands of eggs. So this was about external fertilization. Coming to next type of fertilization which is internal fertilization. Let's learn about this also. It's internal fertilization. As it is clear from the term itself, internal means inside the body of the animal. So internal fertilization. Where does it occur? Internal fertilization occurs inside the animal's body female's body where do sperm meet eggs the male deposits the sperm inside the reproductive system of the female so next question about this is where is the zygote form fertilization occurs and the zygote is formed inside female's body in her reproductive system last question about internal fertilization is where are new individual formed now here new individual which is developing in the fertilized egg. It can be formed either inside the female body or outside female body. Again, we have two options. So let's explore about these two options also. So as far as development of new individual from the fertilized egg or zygote is concerned. So here also we have two options. In case of internal fertilization, the new individual can be formed either inside the female's body or outside. This is also amazing. Now you are clear with these two terms is fertilization. If it is taking place outside the animal's body, it is external fertilization. If it is taking inside female's reproductive system, then it is internal fertilization. In external fertilization, you learned that zygote, embryo and new organism, they are developing outside in the outside environment. Whereas in case of internal fertilization, zygote formation is taking place within the reproductive system of female body. This single cell zygote is dividing, redividing and forming a group of cells and turning into an embryo. The embryo development is further of two types. If it is taking place inside female's body and then the organism is born, then this type of embryo development is baby parents. And if the embryo development is taking place outside the body, within the egg, then it is oviparous. 
So let's know about these two terms in little more detail with the help of examples. Development of embryo. In animals with internal fertilization, fertilized egg develops into an embryo. That embryo develops into an organism either inside the female body or outside. And on the basis of that, we have to learn about two more terms. One is viviparous and another is oviparous. So let us take up viviparous animals first. Viviparous. Viviparous animals, human beings and most other mammals such as cow, goats, dogs and tiger, they give birth to fully formed young ones. So the animals that give birth to young ones are called viviparous animals. So human beings, we give birth to young ones and we are viviparous. So like us, dogs, cat, tiger, elephant, they also give birth to young ones fully developed young ones. So they are also called viviparous animals. So let's learn about another type of embryo development which was oviparous. Oviparous animals. Birds, snakes, crocodile lay fertilized eggs which develops into young one within that fertilized egg and once development is complete, the egg hatch and the young one comes out of it. So all those animals that lay eggs and from which the young one hatch, they are called oviparous animals. And we have a long list of oviparous animals too. So with this, we are through with two types of embryo development with respect to internal fertilization. Next term is also equally interesting and important. And it is our last objective, objective number five, metamorphosis. What is metamorphosis? Pures, the transformation of the larva into an adult through drastic changes is called metamorphosis. When the larva is changing into an adult through drastic changes, in its life cycle, that process is called metamorphosis. If we have to define it scientifically, then we have to write that metamorphosis is a biological process which involves sudden and abrupt changes in the body structure of the animal by cell growth and diffusion. This metamorphosis is seen in number of insects and few of the Animals which undergoes metamorphosis are frog, butterfly, silk moth, mosquito, etc. Now let me explain the same term with the help of life cycle of frog. Viewers, you know, in case of frog, they reproduce sexually. Fertilization, it takes place in the external environment in the water body on water surface so these fertilized eggs they start developing into a fish like creature called tadpole so this tadpole it started swimming just like any other fish in that water body because it has tail gradually its hind legs they appear after a few days its four legs they also emerge out from its fish like body and then its tail, it gets absorbed inside its body and it then it transforms. And this shows its gradual transformation from a fish-like initial appearance to an actual frog-like appearance. So within the life cycle of frog, what you have noticed children, that tadpole stage of frog is entirely different from its adult stage. And there are abrupt changes abrupt and sudden changes in its life cycle. So this is metamorphosis. Similar observation can be made after observing the life cycle of the silk moth. So here in life cycle of silk moth also there are sudden and abrupt changes. The initial stage of the organism it does not resemble the adult one. So this is about 
metamorphosis. Now it's time to quickly summarize the content of this video. In this video, you learnt about fertilization, its meaning. You also came to know about the types of fertilization. When we discussed about embryo development, there you came across two terms, viviparous animals and oviparous animals. And lastly, you learnt about metamorphosis. So with this, we are through with the content of this video. And now it's time to go for a self-assessment with the help of a worksheet which I have prepared for you. And I suggest you to go through these three questions. My next video of this chapter is about fertilization and embryo development in human beings. And in that, I have covered the content given on page number 104 in your NCRT science textbook in the form of part 4 of this chapter dealing with fertilization and embryo development in human beings. This is one of the very important segment of this chapter and it is there in class 10 also. So if you want to make a sound foundation of this segment, I suggest you to join me there also. With this, it's time to sign out. I want to thank all my supporters for subscribing to Biohub and coming up with their suggestions in comment box. If you are a new viewer, I welcome you. And if you are a frequent visitor, I suggest you to subscribe to my channel. It will help you. One appeal viewers, if you are liking the content of my videos, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Please do share the link of my videos with your fellow friends. I am confident that it is of some help to them. So with this, I am signing out. Please take good care of yourself and keep exploring about biology with me on my channel Biohub. Bye-bye.